strange, perhaps, with two so beautiful and at that age of mutability, shut in a kind of prison, with no women, with none, even if they had been women, to be fairer than they. They loved each other, yes, but this was this way with them. They had grown from children to men, in constant company with each other. They were at ease with each other and with no one else, and currently asked no more of each other than that. In addition, neither Zerum nor Shell was quite human. For Shell, it was paradoxically the wicked innocence of the Eshva still on him and in him that kept him from the temple's form of sin. To the Eshva, everything was central, sexual. Moonrise was an orgasm to the art, the eye. A touch was love, was fire. Beside, everything was of interest, part of the dream. They had desire, but did not only live through this. Eshva lusted after the music of a look, and they never questioned nor sought to analyze the sensations that poured over them, only to prolong and enjoy. If flames woke in the vittles of shell, and probably they did, untroubled and unhurried, he did not seek to quench them, or find out their actual sources. Time had no proper meaning to the Eshva. Shell had not yet recollected that to men, time was everything. And for Zirem, it was his own beginning that walled him off, the unremembered pain and screaming, the broken spear, the month with the holy men, their counsel. He feared to remember. Someone hunted at its seal, must not catch up. Pleasure of the flesh, any pleasure, daunted him, though he did not completely know this. The opulence of the yellow priesthood he rejected with a contempt born of that concealed fear. He wanted to be angry, to cleanse himself with anger and denial. He wanted also sometimes to be quiet, to drop down like a stone into the dark pools of his own thoughts, and to lie there, drowned in peace, without the words and customs of men to remind him he too was a man. And both these things, the forum for anger and action, the quiet peace, both Shell gave him. Shell who seldom spoke, but Shell who listened. Shell who could not be constrained, but found for them the shades of the night to be free in and to be silent in. Shell who gave so much, could not be metamorphosed into the antithesis of Zirim's wish, a symbol of the sleepy stairs into the mouth of hounds, where the master of night, the lord of darkness, the demon, waited. Tomorrow is the first day of the festival of the spring moon, said Zirem as they walked through the colonnades. I have been elected one of those who are to make the journey to the Estune village. I think they dare not refuse me. I mean to do some good, and said so. Why should I have all this mad training and apothecary training if I am not to use it? What is this place? he added the house for rich men to wallow in like swine, and do the gods resemble the men? Shell opened this fist, and showed the red bead which meant he also had been elected for the eastern journey. His eyes, meeting Zirim's, said with irony, You and I, outside the temple, they have never kept us in. Another strolled by, a fat young man named Bayak, who wore an earring of jasper he had been given for making twenty fair copies of a holy text. Eastward? I too, he said. We shall see some women at last, if only the sick ones. But then you pretty birds have flown out and seen women before. Whom do you meet in the grooves at night? That is, when you do not invent tunes for each other. Zirim stared him down, a glower of steel feathered in him by the holy men of the desert. He said nothing. When not alone with Shell, like Shell, Zirim seldom talked. 
His angry tirades was shot within his skull, expressed in cold and level tones, if ever spoken. Probably he did not, even now, believe in those about him. He had got the habit, in defence, of blaming them for their alienness to himself, of being angered by them in order to react to their existence. But fat young Bayak, lowering his eyes, said, Pardon me, Zirim, I only joked with you. But you had better be warned. They tell of a dreadful woman who has come to live in the eastern village. A woman who sells her loins for money. Then I pity her, said Zirim. Oh, do not. She is an enticer and a blasphemer. She paints her face. And she loves to tempt the young and the fair. Ah, Zirim, Zirim. Unnoted, Shell had made a small sound between his lips. A bird passing in the air suddenly opened its bowls over the startled head of the fat young priest. Living and squawking, Zirim and Shell moved on.